Today we're taking a look at Anycubic's first ever core XY 3D printer, the Cobra S1 Combo. We'll unbox the printer, set it up with the Ace Pro, run a few multicolor test prints, and see what this budget friendly machine is capable of and whether it's worth buying. Starting off with some quick specs, the Cobra S1 Combo is a fully enclosed 3D printer with a build volume of 250mm cubed. It has a solid, well-built design featuring metal side panels, a removable plastic lid, and a plastic front door. The printer supports speeds of up to 600mm per second, with typical print speeds around 300mm per second. The hot end can reach temperatures of up to 320 degrees, and this comes equipped with a 0.4mm brass nozzle. While it's compatible with most filament types, the nozzle isn't hardened, so you might want to consider upgrading it if you plan to print with abrasive materials. One standout feature is a tool-free quick-release hot end, which can be easily removed by unlocking a lever and unplugging a few cables. The S1 features a dual-sided PEI flexible build plate, and the heated bed can reach up to 120 degrees. As you expect from a modern 3D printer, it comes with auto bed levelling, a built-in camera for remote monitoring and time-lapse, power loss recovery, and both vibration and dynamic flow compensation. Connectivity options include built-in Wi-Fi with cloud, LAN only, and USB printing modes. Control is handled through a 4.3 inch color touchscreen, which is responsive and easy to navigate. The screen is also angle adjustable, making it comfortable to view and operate from different positions. For multicolor printing, the combo package includes Anycubic's Ace Pro filament feeder, which supports up to four rolls of filament. You can expand this with a second unit, allowing for up to eight colors in a single print. As an added bonus, the Ace Pro also features a built-in filament dryer that can heat up to 55 degrees, which is perfect for keeping your materials dry and free from moisture during prints. So the printer and the Ace Pro arrive in a large box weighing around 25 kilos, with the printer itself only weighing about 16 kilos making it still relatively easy to move around once set up. Everything is neatly packaged inside, including unboxing instructions and all the necessary accessories to get started. The Ace Pro unit is inside the printer and is secured with a few screws that need to be removed before lifting it out. Additionally, there's a few transport screws from around the bed that also need to be taken out before first use. To set up the printer, start by attaching the spool holder to the back and this is used for single rolls of filament if you don't have the Ace Pro, and it's also recommended to use it when printing with softer materials like TPU rather than using the multicolor unit. Next we install the filament hub and connect the cables and tubes. On the back of the Ace Pro there are four blue clips that need to be removed, and these are quite tight and can be a bit tricky to take off and reattach. Then connect two power cables, one to the Ace Pro and the other to the printer. The activated carbon filter is installed inside the printer, just behind a small clip-on cover. When you power on the printer, it takes about one minute to boot up. On the first startup, you'll need to go through the initial setup process and run the self-system check. This will test the hot end, heated bed, and run both the input shaping and auto bed leveling. Next, we're ready to load some filament. I noticed Anycubic spools had no RFID symbols or indication on it. So it was a nice surprise to see that the spools do, in fact, include RFID tags. So when loading filament, the system automatically detects and sets the correct material type and color based on the tag, which is very convenient. So for the first print, I started off with a classic benchy boat to give the printer a quick test. I used Anycubic's high-speed PLA and printed a couple of benchy models. One was a pre-sliced 44-minute version, and the other was the faster 15-minute model. As for the results, overall they look good. There was the usual horizontal line across the center of the hole, which is common on many Benchy prints, and some fine webbing also. Aside from that, the surface finish was smooth and the details look good. To prepare more models for printing, we're using Anycubic Slicer Next, which is based on Orca Slicer. After downloading a few updates, setting up the software and adding the printer was straightforward. For all the tests, I used the default settings which gives you an idea of the print quality as a new user would expect to achieve. Once the models are sliced, they can be sent to the printer over Wi-Fi or with a USB drive. There's also a LAN only mode available, which means you don't have to create or sign into an account, perfectly if you prefer to keep everything within your own personal network. 
However, for the best overall experience, signing into an account is recommended. This gives you access to the online maker files and lets you control the printer remotely via mobile devices. In the software, you can also monitor the printer and watch the progress through the built-in camera. While the camera's quality isn't the best, it's sufficient for keeping an eye on the print. Back over at the printer, we're printing a multicolored Spider-Man model using white, red, blue and black PLA. While printing, I kept an eye on the filament swaps, which felt a bit slow. The timer showed just over 2 minutes and 30 seconds to finish one color and switch to the next. This is somewhat slower compared to high-end printers on the market. That said, the final print turned out well, the multicolor effect looks great, and although the Ace Pro filament swap was a bit slow, it worked reliably. On the rear of the print, some areas were smooth, while others showed slight ripples in the surface finish. So there's definitely room for improvement. For this print, we're creating a multicolor sliding puzzle using Anycubic's white and turquoise blue PLA. The process begins with printing the numbers in white. While most of the numbers came out well, I did notice some appeared slightly under extruded and less filled compared to others. After printing all the numbers, the printer switched to blue to print the blocks and the frame. Then the second base piece is printed. This actually completed with a very clean and smooth finish on both sides. To finish up, the two parts are aligned and snapped together nicely. On closer inspection, the puzzle numbers seem to need a slightly closer bed to nozzle distance or a higher extrusion on the first layer. There was also a small black spot, possibly some leftover filament on the nozzle from the previous print. Apart from these minor issues, the print turned out well and all the moving parts were free and functioned as intended with good tolerances. Next we're using PETG to print a wall hook. Since PETG tends to absorb quite a bit of moisture, having the built-in filament dryer is really handy for keeping the filament dry before and during printing. With PETG, we're printing at a slightly higher temperature of around 230 degrees, while also keeping the print bed heated at about 70 degrees. The print turned out well, clean, strong, and a nice functional print. Although looking closer, there are a few imperfections in the layer lines, so again the result is good, but not quite perfect. This next print is a low poly model of an F22. The main body is printed in two halves that are later joined together. And there's also a couple of tail pieces that are printed all using Anycubic's grey PLA. Now once the body was printed, there's a noticeable layer line going through the wings and looking closer, there's what to looks to be some VFAs on the surface. On the body, there was also some slight warping that occurred near the tail end, which was more obvious once the parts had been joined together. The finished model does look good overall, but unfortunately it has a few printing defects that prevent it from being a clean print. The final print is a pot created using spiral mode, which starts with a few solid base layers and then prints a continuous single wall spiral to form the rest of the model. The first layer came out exceptionally well, clean, flat and even. The sides also look smooth and consistent. Overall this print turned out great and stands as one of the best results the printer produced so far. Overall the Cobra S1 Combo is a decent, budget friendly Core XY multicolor printer with a sturdy build and easy setup. Its Ace Pro system supports multiple filaments and includes a useful built-in filament dryer. However, you'll find the automatic filament changes are a bit slow compared to the higher-end multi-material systems. Print quality ranges from OK to good, although most completed prints show some imperfections, but these could likely be improved with slower speeds and with better software tuning. If you're looking for a more budget-friendly alternative to the big-name Core XY multicolor printers, the S1 Combo might be worth considering, as it does have some potential. But keep in mind that its print quality isn't the best out of the box, and you may want to eventually upgrade to something better. As another budget option, there's a newly released K2 combo from Creality, which only costs slightly more. On the other hand, if you don't really need a core XY enclosed printer, something like Bamboo's A1 paired with the AMS Lite offers a superior print quality and a better overall user experience at a slightly lower cost.